Oh, and welcome back to the Cracking Thang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 1578, minimum time to make rope colorful. Before we get into the question, just want to ask you guys to like and comment. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. So really just leave any comment you want. It really helps. Also, check out the Discord channel if you haven't already. And let's get into the problem. Alice has N balloons arranged on a rope. You are given a zero index string colors where colors of I is the color of the ith balloon. Alice wants the rope to be colorful. She does not want two consecutive balloons to be of the same color. So she asks Bob for help. Bob can remove some balloons from the rope to make it colorful. You are given a zero indexed integer array needed time where needed time of I is the time in seconds that Bob needs to remove the ith balloon from the rope. Return the minimum time Bob needs to make the rope colorful. Okay, let's look at an example. <clears throat> so we have this rope here where there's a blue balloon, a red balloon, a blue balloon, a blue balloon, and then a green balloon. <clears throat> and we can see that we want to make it, um, you know, into one where there's no two colors next to each other. So obviously this blue balloon is fine on its own because obviously there's nothing to its left and to its right is a red balloon. So we're fine there. Same with the red balloon. To its left is a blue balloon and to its right is a blue balloon, which is fine because we don't want two nodes to be next to each other or two balloons here. So this one is where we start having problems, right? This blue and this blue are problematic because they're next to each other. So we have to get rid of one of them. So obviously we're looking for the minimum time that we need to remove these balloons. So let's look at how much time it would take to remove each one. So the, this first blue balloon would take one, this would take two, this would take three, four, and five. Obviously we wanna remove this balloon because it's gonna take less time to do so. So we get rid of it. And now uh, we just have our blue balloon, which is fine because to its uh, left we have red now, and to its right we have green. And this green balloon is fine as well because to its left we have the blue and to its right we have, um, you know, nothing, right? So we only had to remove one balloon. So in this case, the minimum time was three. Cool. So this question is really easy if you're just looking at it, right? And basically all you need to do is just find the minimum value of what happens when you have two balloons next to each other, right? If you just have all one balloon where everything is perfect, there's always only one balloon um, of that color and then the next one is always a different one, then you don't have to do anything. When you have two balloons, we have the case that we had, which is a little bit uh, trickier, but all you have to do is just compare the time needed for that balloon uh, with its neighbor, figure out which one is larger, and then just take the smaller one and remove it, right? And we can scale this to three or more, except for the problem is if we have three or more, let's say the cost is three, four, five, right? So when we hit the first balloon, we will look to its right and we'll see that its neighbor is also one of its uh, color. So we have to make a decision here uh, as to which one to remove. So obviously we're gonna take this one, right? And now we have to do the same thing again, but obviously the problem gets smaller and we can basically just reduce it down uh, one step at a time. And then from this one, we see, okay, which one is easier to get rid of four or five, obviously we get rid of the four. Uh, so we'd have like a total time of seven. So basically we just want to parse through our array going left to right. If we ever encounter two balloons that are the same, um, then what we want to do is simply just get rid of the one that's smaller in terms of the time needed. And we also need to keep track of the bigger time that we just took. That way, uh, as we're going through the array, if we do encounter you know, a case where there's actually three or more of the same balloon uh, in order, then we just need to keep going and comparing the current value with whatever the last value was, and we're good to go. So that is essentially the algorithm we wanna go with. It's relatively simple. Uh, this isn't even like a dynamic programming question. It's just literally a one pass solution. You don't even have to use dynamic programming. I was surprised I thought it was DP and you guys know I fucking hate DP. So really glad that it's not. Anyway, that's enough rambling. Let's go to the code editor, type this up and you'll see just how simple this question actually is. I'll see you there. Okay, we're back in the code editor, let's type this up. So we're gonna need a few variables to actually help us here with our calculation. So we want to basically store the you know time it takes and we also are gonna need a variable to actually store uh, the last 
balloon cost that we had uh, in case that we actually have uh, three or more in a row because we're going to need to carry those forward so we can actually use them as we go. So let's define those. So we're just going to say res and cur uh, is going to equal to zero. Obviously, we haven't done anything yet. Now we just need to process the balloons. So we're going to say for i in range len uh, colors. What we're going to do is we're going to check whether or not our current balloon is actually the same as the previous balloon. So let's just say if i is greater than zero, because obviously we can't uh, look backwards from the zeroth index, and uh, colors of i does not actually equal to colors of i minus one. So if this is the case, um, then we don't have to do anything, right? If the current color actually equals the previous, uh, doesn't equal the previous color, then that means that we're fine. We don't need to pop any balloons, we're good. So we can just keep track of our current time, which is just going to be zero, right? Because we haven't actually needed to pop anything. So we can set reset our current back to zero. Otherwise, what we're gonna do is the total time, or I guess our result here is actually what we called it, is going to be, uh, we're gonna add to it the minimum of whatever the current time is. So basically, remember, this is the cost um, when we have multiple in a row. So we popped one, and now we need to keep track of whatever that current one is in case there's one after it that's the same. So we're going to take the minimum of whatever our cur value is and whatever the current balloons cost is. So we're going to say needed time of i. So basically, we're going to compare the cost of popping this balloon that we're at currently with the i th index with whatever the previous um, one that we decided not to pop was because remember we always have a choice which one to pop and we always take the smaller one and we need to keep track of the one that we didn't choose to pop because that's the one that's going to get carried forward in the case that we actually have three or more this doesn't apply if there's only two um, but if there's three or more then we need to keep track of the one that we didn't pop so that way the next time we see one because obviously there's three or more in, in row um, then we can essentially choose which one to pop. So that is what we're going to add to our result. And now we need to update our current, which is going to be the maximum. So the one that we didn't pop is going to be the larger of these two. So it's going to be the maximum of whatever current is and needed time of i. And that's essentially all we do. Once this for loop ends, we'll have calculated our result. And all we need to do is return it. So let us actually uh, submit this and verify that it works. Submit this real quick. And once this runs, okay, cool, accept it, and it looks good. All right, what is our time and space complexity here? So time complexity wise, as you can see, all we do is go through the array one time from left to right with our for loop here, and all we're doing is just comparing things uh, by index. So all of that is going to be big O of one operations, and since we do it for the entire list, uh, this is going to be big O of n, where n is obviously the length of our colors array here. For space, we don't actually use any extra space because all we have are these two variables, which are constant space allocations. So this is actually going to be a constant space solution. And this is the absolute best that you can do for this. Um, like I said, this question is super simple. What is this like eight lines of code? And that includes some white space here. So really not that bad. Hopefully this solution makes sense for you. I think it's relatively intuitive. I was surprised that it wasn't dynamic programming and I'm very happy it's not because I hate it. Uh, anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. You guys can leave whatever the hell you want in the comments. Just slam your face into the keyboard or write algorithm or whatever. Honestly, anything helps. It's the engagement that really helps grow the channel. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to join the Discord where we talk about all things Fang, interviewing, you can have your resume reviewed by me. Uh, you can ask for referrals at Fang companies, all of that. Join the Discord. The link will be in the description below. I hope to see you there. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.